Container of weight W is suspended from this ring at A. Cable BAC passes through the ring. So we've got some ring here at A. And we're going to have a tension that comes up from A to B. And the same tension is going to come up from A to C because it's a ring. So in both cases, you're going to have the same tension. This cable passes through the ring and it's attached to the fixed supports at B and C. Two forces, P and I, P and Q, P in the I direction and Q in the K direction are attached to the ring. And we've also got this nice weight, which is 1,200 pounds, 1,200 newtons. What we're looking for is P and Q. Now, W is in the negative J direction. We need to note that. P and Q are given in their directions, and we have directions on our other two forces. That's the free body diagram. Nothing else acts on this ring at A. We want to put each of these forces in their Cartesian forms. Well, Q, P, and W are already there. All we need to do is the Cartesian form for A, B, and A, C. We want to start with a position vector, and then a unit vector, and then multiply them out. Multiply by the T to get the actual vector. So let's start with a position vector. The vector from A to B, this is the position vector from A up toward B, is negative 0.48 in the I direction, plus 0.72 meters in the J direction, and minus 0.16 meters in the K direction. The position vector from A to C is 0.24 in the I direction, plus 0.72 in the J direction, minus 0.13 in the K direction. Those are based on knowing where these points are in space. That's something that you need to be able to get to from this point. Figure out what the Cartesian point for B is, figure out what the Cartesian point for A is, and take the 2 minus from. So in this case, our B point is at negative 0 0.480, negative 0.16, and A is at 0, negative 0 0.720. So once you have those locations, you can find the position vector. To find the unit vector, we want to divide by the magnitudes of each of these. So let's figure out what the magnitude of AB is. Take the square root of each of their components squared, so 0 0.48, 0 0.72, and 0 0.16 squared. And if you do those, you end up with a nice round number, 0 0.88. And that's exact. The square root of the components for AC squared ends up with 0 0.77. These are, the position vector is in units of meters, so is the magnitude of the position vector. So when you divide by that, you get actually the unit vector in the AB direction is the actual vector AB divided by 0.88. And if you multiply that out, what you end up with is, well, I'll just write it like this, 0.48 divided by 0.88i plus 0.72 divided by 0.88j minus 0.16 divided by 0.88k. And we're going to do the same thing for the other one. To get the actual vector for the tension, you've got to multiply by t. So this looks like t times negative 0.54545i plus 0.81818j minus 0.181818k. And the tension in the other one, so we can say this is t1 and t2 from a to b and from a to c, same thing, multiply by the unit vector in the AC direction, which is this 0.24i divided by 0.77 meters. Multiply it out, and you get the same tension, because it's going through a ring, times 0.31169i plus 0.93506j minus 0.16883k. Once you have these two, the P, Q, and W vectors are already in their Cartesian form. So you have PI minus WJ plus QK. Those are our other three vectors. We can add these up in our equilibrium. The sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Some of the forces in the y direction equals zero. Some of the forces in the z direction equals zero. Multiply them all out, or rather, add them all up. I have minus 0.54545t. That comes from the AB vector plus 0.31169t, same t, plus p equals zero. And then for the j's, I'm going to get 0.81818t plus 0.93506t, same t, minus w equals zero. And for the k's, I've got 0.181818t minus 0.16883t plus q 
equals zero. W is known. W was given in the problem as 1200 newtons. So we have unknowns of T, P, and Q. These three unknowns, I have three equations to solve for them. And you can do that best here by substituting and solving. If you add up the T's and write them out, you can see that P is equal to 0.23376T. W is 1.753245T. And Q is 0.35065T. That's just solving for P, Q, and W here. As soon as W is 1200 newtons, T is 684.45 from this second equation, the sum of the forces in the y. You can substitute back that back up here and you get P is 160 newtons and Q is 240 newtons. Answer the question. What are we looking for? We're actually asked to determine P and Q. So if we're asked to determine P and Q, this is our answer. In three sig figs, that's what you get.